HR tech, the good, the bad, the ugly. That's next on the Rec Tech Podcast. Welcome to Rec Tech, the podcast where recruiting and technology intersect. Each month, you'll hear from vendors shaping the recruiting world, along with recruiters who'll tell you how they use technology to hire talent. Now, here's your host, the mad scientist of online recruiting, Chris Russell. Hey again, Rick Techies. Welcome to the only podcast that helps employers and recruiters connect with more candidates through technology inspired conversations. Mastering career technology is key to hiring great talent. That's why this show exists. All right. Jamie Aquila is the director of technology at Humoriso. Uh, Humoriso provides HR solutions and consulting for small businesses trying to manage budgets and growth. They do a lot of implementations as well around the HR tech space. So, Jamie, welcome to the show. It's nice to have you. Yeah, Chris. Pleasure to be here. Definitely. Uh, before we dive into the uh, intricacies of HR tech. Uh, let's talk about you first, uh, your sure. journey in HR tech space. I see you worked at Harry a while back, but uh, how'd you get started in all this? I feel like 90% of those in HR, my career did not start out in HR. That seems to be the uh, going consensus here. Uh, fresh out of college, I actually had my own graphic design uh, company for, gosh, about five or seven years or so. I was picked up by one of the companies that did uh, contests, online contests. This is about when YouTube started to do its growth tra- mm-hmm. trajectory. And with that, really couldn't find a niche in the, con- in the contest space, was wasting too much money. We pivoted the platform to be an EPK model for those uh, singers, actors, dancers that kind of needed more, a more digital resume, if you will, to go out in the space. We then pivoted the EPK model to be a resume generator. And that's actually where I kind of got my feet wet per se in HR. Uh, So that was around, oh gosh, I'm going to date myself here, 2011, 2012 ish. Come 2014, uh, a gentleman by the name of Luke Fryer out in New York City started a company called Harry and brought me on as employee number seven. And at the time, it was specifically just a job board for restaurants in Manhattan. And he was doing a pretty good job of it. He actually had a decent talent pool going. Uh, clients were happy, started to develop some type of enterprise business and whatnot. And uh, we had two goals there. It was uh, da- it was to uh, kind of down tools on the existing platform and build it for growth, as well as starting to incorporate additional HR features into it. So that team of seven quickly became a team of 200, uh, 87 of which on the, uh, the dev side of it, where we went from mm-hmm. just being a job board in Manhattan all the way through the HR process, from digital onboarding, documents, uh, all the way through to management, timekeeping pieces as well, uh, in order to solve the entire equation from acquisition all the way through to retention. Uh, and that's really where I got my feet wet in HR. Hmm. Um, come, gosh, I'd say about 2018 or so, what I got you, exhausted. What, Sorry, good. What did you learn about Harry, about the uh, to the HR process working there? Which can be a quick, quick takeaway from that uh, time? Sure. So- just HR, be, uh, Harry being in the restaurant industry taught me a lot about some of the dirty details of HR, specifically turnover. Um, a, Harry tried to solve the really niche problems of the restaurant industry and did a really good job of it too at the time where they wanted to not only hire quicker, but hire the right people and keep them for as long as they can. And that's really hard to do in the restaurant industry with some of the highest uh, turnover out there. He, uh, I got to say, Luke had the, the grand idea of trying to keep everything in a single platform, which I'll allude to later once you have all these uh, disparate programs uh, throughout that don't integrate with one another. It's very hard to keep culture involved in some of these applications as well. So keeping everything centralized on a platform all the way through to even payroll was really key in Harry's success into ensuring that that culture message came through to keep town as long as it could. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, they kind of came. I, I kind of sort of remember Harry as a restaurant job board, and then like yep. all of a sudden, a couple of years ago, they're like this whole different company. Out of, of nowhere, of, boom! Uh, yeah. and, and I don't want to say it happened overnight, but it took about two years or so to really develop both the onboarding and the talent management side of things. It got really big in the UK, uh, especially with the hotel chains over there. So that's kind of why I didn't hear much in the states. They did a great job of bringing it overseas mm-hmm. and into the UK market, and continue to do so today. Now they're really back here in the states. They just raised forty three million dollars of funding. Uh, it's good. They got some big names under the belt. They got some McDonald's franchises, um, Jersey Mike's, a couple other ones as Ooh. well. So they're they're doing Jersey Mike's. Job. Oh my yep. favorite. Exactly. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. Yeah, I got I got to support them. Got a gift card today for my birthday. There so. you go. <laughs> got to hit them up. Awesome. Um, yeah. What, uh, what's, Jim, what's a typical day in a like for you? Um, 
day in the life like for you? Uh, you so um, after joining Human Riso back in, I guess it was about two years or so now, a uh, buddy of mine, John Baldino, who actually did HR at Harry at the time, uh, he and I worked together a couple of times. My joke with Human Riso is that I was, an, I was, uh, I hired them twice and I was actually a customer of Human Riso twice before becoming an employee. Uh, so John and I got together really well. His idea was with his old HR, his HRO process of being really the outsourced uh, voice, third-party voice of a company, there was a void with implementations. And that's where I spent about half my time. It's it's helping companies that are bringing on these mammoth platforms, your Paycoms, your ADP Workforce Nows of the world, to try to be that middleman of, hey, I've been here before. I've heard them talk this talk before. Let's uh, be your your guiding light in what is going to be a monumental process for you over the next six months. Um, usually, it's a lot less than that. Usually, it's about three months for some of the smaller companies. But um, they're, I mean, they talk a big game, these pay comps and ADPs, and a small company really doesn't know how to get their act together, doesn't know compliance, doesn't know uh, even um, position management. So it's it's kind of being their guiding light through that implementation process. Gotcha. Okay. Um, give me a success story around one of your implementations uh, of HR tech. Uh, what comes to mind there? Uh, I got to go back to the days at Harry first, because uh, a lot of the times we were dealing with clients that were mom and pop shops in uh, Hell's Kitchen, New York, that had filing cabinets worth of data. And they had never been introduced to an online platform before. Uh, coffee shops, Chinese restaurants, bagel shops, you name it. Uh, we, we saw the gamut. And not only do we see some scary compliance issues, but we knew that this process could not be done on paper forever. We're in the 21st century. And this is the mid-2010s coming into the 2020s. There is no reason to keep filing cabinets worth of applications for 20 years. So it was the, it was the process of not only getting them into the digital era, but finally putting some light on metrics. They didn't know how many applications they were going through. They didn't know their turnover rates. They didn't know uh, how how fast their acquisition process was. So it wasn't just figuring out what was wrong. It was figuring out how to measure it from the start. And that's really where implementing uh, some of these systems for the first time really shines a light in your entire process. If you don't have the metrics to look at, you don't know what to fix. So I would say half the success stories for some of the smaller businesses were just shining light on the data that they already had that they didn't know they had yeah. through implementing some just basic talent acquisition practices. Looking for your next HR technology role? Go to your browser, type in hrtechjob.com and browse hundreds of jobs with the best HR technology vendors. HR tech professionals finally have a dedicated job marketplace to find work or be found. Sign up for job alerts or post a resume. Discover jobs with companies like Workday, Phenom, HiBob, Deal, and more. You'll even find HR tech roles with employers in case you want to work with managing HCM or HRIS platforms. HR Tech Job, the only job market for HR technology careers. Join us at hrtechjob.com. Do you, do you remember some of the, uh, you know, the responses you got from a client after, you know, changing we that should, dynamic? We, we had one client probably save about 30% of their HR time and budget. We, we we had clients that they were firing some of their HR staff because they just didn't need them anymore because they were doing things so inefficiently hmm. that uh, they were hiring three, four people for a 20-man shop. And we're like, that just doesn't sound right. Why do you need three people for a 20-man shop? Uh, and it's like, look, you could streamline these processes to the point where if you have enough automation, you might not even need the HR staff. So we saw that a whole bunch of times. So it was saving money and saving time left and right. Uh, yeah. And it was it was great to great to see that and and great to save those those clients who again restaurant industry with the thinnest margins out there, saving them as much money as we could. Yeah. Uh, so that's the good. Stuff about the bad uh, in your mm -hmm. experience, what are some common challenges or pitfalls? companies face when adopting HR tech? Yeah. Um, I got to say that even if you have one person in the company that uh, is all for it, you're always going to have somebody who's a detractor. Oh, we've been doing it this way for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Oh, we know this process. We're, it's just the whole resistance to change thing. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, fearing job displacement on familiar processes. Mm -hmm. That's probably the number one. Uh, number two, I would usually say choosing the wrong solution. They're, fear they're fearful that what they're bringing in is not the right HR technology for them. Um, and then under that just comes like lack of training, data privacy, integration issues. 
Um, a lot could go wrong. And you just have to develop these mitigation strategies when you do them over and over again to implement change management, ensure that you're in compliance, plan these integrations out, um, and most importantly, just continue to evalu evaluation and feedback. That's usually the, the name of the game. It's once it's in place, measure what you're doing and make sure you're successful doing it. How do you go about helping your clients uh, select the platform? Give me some thoughts around that. And give me, Usually, give me some specific, give me some specific, specific examples too. Like, name, give me a couple names here uh, that you're working with. Yeah, a lot of the times um, they have a good idea on what they want, and what we try to do is first ensure that all right, you're coming to us with a, you need a payroll company. Okay, you've heard of ADP, you've heard about Workforce Now, and we'll go through the back and forth on which one might be better for you. But it's really, it really comes down to okay, what other problems do you have that these Bohemoths could solve at the same time, and that's usually why we lean on those large giants: your ADPs, your workforce now, your workforce now's, your paycoms, paychecks, paylocity, you name it. It's because they really do solve a large scope of things, from talent acquisition all the way through through paycheck determination. And usually, that's the name of the game. It, it's okay. What besides payroll is wrong? How how is, how are you doing talent acquisition now? Can we solve that as part of a, uh, a more broader implementation and really increase the scope or decrease the scope till we say, yep, Paycom's your best fit, ADP's your best fit, is your best fit, based on how much they want to solve at once. Hmm, interesting. Hey, what do, you, what do you think about the new whole crop of these global payroll providers, Remote, Deal, Oyster? Got any thoughts on those guys? It all, all depends on integrations. I know that they're not going to solve the full gamut that some of these other uh, companies could solve for. But if you actually have a decent strategy of my ATS is this, it works great. It works better than Paycom or better than ADP would, one of the bigger ones. Hey, I have this for talent management. I'm using this for day-to-day. -day. I'm using this for timekeeping. Then those disparate payroll companies work great uh, as long as they integrate and they connect together with the global picture. It really depends on the entire ecosystem and whether or not it fits within and you can integrate it with. Now, the more pieces of the puzzle that you have, the greater chance for failure, the greater chance that it some data might not flow through correctly. You have to manipulate it in a certain way. You might need additional layer in between to solve for API discrepancies. Uh, and it can get really messy and really expensive really quickly. So you need a, a decent reason to do so. And there are plenty of them, but you just need to make sure that it works with everything else that you have going on. Yeah. Uh, the ugly. So, you know, HR tech is just, it's rap it's rapidly evolving today. It's to me, yeah. like you have to, the recruiting profession is so technically oriented now. You have yeah. to know how to use tech to hire talent. It's kind of yeah, why I started sure. this podcast. Uh, but give me some <laughs> scenarios where, that tech didn't meet your expectations, caused some uh, unforeseen issues. Give me some thoughts around that. Well, again, I hate to go back to the Harry days, but we were working with clients that still a decent percentage of their new hires were walk-ins. And if it wasn't walk-ins, it was referrals. If it wasn't referrals, it was friends of the family. So while the rest of the world, sure, can meet those tech expectations for talent acquisition, there are industries where uh, tech is not the number one platform for acquisition. That said, they still need to work in tandem. They still need uh, the hiring process to work with both walk-ins and the digital age. Now, the digital age is going to continue to evolve. It's now I have those people on the fringe, people without a cell phone, people without an email, people filling out paper applications, people that don't speak English, people that maybe shouldn't be working in the States. I still have to figure out how to properly hire and legally hire those people in the digital age and bring them up to speed as well as those that I could find on the internet. Now, finding them on the internet has been uh, something in the past 10 years or so, and you can, you can contribute to this, that has, uh, I think, gone in a very positive direction. It's a, it's a little bit easier now to find the right talent, to narrow down your talent, to wean out bad talent, to assess talent. There are so many tools out there to make sure that you're hiring the right person. Um, but yeah, it's 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 got to be the healthy mix of both. Yep. Uh, AI is weaving its way into HR tech, Jamie. I'm curious, uh, where do you think it's being, uh, where, where's the most practical use case right now for it? And where do you see it going in, in a few years? Uh, fun fact, and this could be the headline of the podcast, AI is the reason I did not attend HR tech this year. And let me kind of <laughs> dive into why. Okay. Um, 
my thought process was this: we had partial, we had some of our team members from Human Resources go to HR Tech this year. Uh, and I went last year. I went in 2022, and it was fantastic. Had a great time. In 23, uh, after following all the companies that I knew were going to be there as well, of course, you're going to have your startup pavilions. You're going to have your tech talks that I'm going to miss, or at least I can view them online. But when it came to the expo part of it itself, my fear was this. My fear was I was going to see the same people giving the same message in every booth that I walk up in, into had a big eight-inch laminated sticker that said Power by AI on it. And my fear was that big old Power by AI sticker was them not knowing what they're doing yet with AI and the product wasn't fully evolved to support AI. And they didn't have enough time between, say, 22 when GPT really evolved and came out through to HR Tech in 23 to release any platforms whatsoever that really harnessed AI. So I feared that they were going to have a lot of lopsided products and it really wasn't, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze to even see what people were thinking. I, I was going to wait until actual product was released to see what people were doing with AI. And really from a talent acquisition standpoint, from a recruitment standpoint, there are only a few facets that I see working straight out of the gate. Now, it doesn't mean that AI is not going to continue to evolve and hiring process would be better. Um, there have been some weird nuances that I've seen uh, really evolve. One, from a recruitment standpoint, the ability for GPT to mask a resume. That was one of those ones I was like, that's genius. That's huge. Uh, I'm not really uh, worried about whether or not it's getting things right or wrong. I'm worried about uh, removing personal information from a resume to get it in front of uh, the companies that I'm recruiting for. And I could do that at mass and at scale. Even a company of our size, where we have a recruitment team of two or three, uh, could do that rather easily with AI. The other piece of the puzzle that I think could come into view rather quickly is employee engagement. Um, perhaps employee happiness, perhaps employee engagement, um, but just from a fundamental, uh, has have there been drastic changes in my workforce recently? Letting AI do those computations, uh, have they noticed, has GPT noticed people coming in late, coming in early, uh, smiling more, being happy more, talking in a more favorable way or in a worse way lately? to give you those kind of key insights that you never had before. Um, and, and that really goes for those employee engagement platforms, uh, even built into say Slack and teams where you could really gauge uh, an employee's demeanor. I can see the dashboard now. Uh, this employee has been late for the last three days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. And, and the good part about GPT or AI in general is these are metrics that you don't necessarily need to program where say five years ago, if I had a time keeping piece of software, I would have to create an alert that says, Hey, when employee is late three times, notify me right it's now with, impressive. yeah. And now, now you, now with these smarter models, they could create their own algorithm algorithms, their own warning systems. And you don't have to tell it what good or bad employee data is. and now knows it. So it could be like, I've noticed these changes in this employee schedule, maybe see if that's an issue without you even have to program it. And I think yeah. that's a really big step in that data acquisition. Yeah. One other trend I think that uh, I've heard people talk about is just the number of uh, job applications that are going to increase through the use through the use of AI. Because I have all these kind of job search AI tools coming out, yeah. with, you know, fixing your resume and applying to all these jobs at once. Sure. That I think is going to be a kind of a problem going forward. Would mm -hmm. you agree? I think that you're going to have a lot of imposters out there. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. And I, I think that it's going to be far too easy for your average Joe to be able to cater their resume to the job that they're looking to hire for. In fact, they could essentially create resumes on the fly mm -hmm. for any job out there that they wish to apply for and really hone in their skills based on uh, what folks are hiring for. Now, from a recruiting manager standpoint, that could be a nightmare because now I might be flooded with what I think are qualified candidates, but maybe it's just a facade. Maybe they're just wording it so well that I'm not really seeing what their true talents or abilities are. On the flip side of the equation, that's where better assessment platforms, testing platforms could come into play. Whereas instead of a recruiter needing to sit here and review each and every resume, some type of AI or machine learning could select the top 50 or so 
and by nature, automatically quiz them or give them some type of simple assessment to make sure that you're hiring the right people. So it's a double-edged sword. I think that you're going to see a lot of increase in applications and the imposter syndrome that comes with GPT, but you're going to have better tools after to, to sift through the weeds. Yeah. Hey, what's the last uh, ATS you guys recommended there, Hume Riso, and why? Oh, put me on the spot on that one. I would have to say Greenhouse. Um, the reason being is their interface is the most intuitive. They handle customizations extremely well. <clears throat> they integrate with all the major players out there, and they've been around the block long enough. Um, they are not the cheapest. They're not the most expensive either. But from an average Joe perspective, if you don't have anything from across the board, from job postings through to hire, uh, that's that's likely where I would, I would say Greenhouse would be on the top of my personal list. Yep. As we look ahead to, uh, to 2024, Jamie, what aspects of HR tech should we be excited about? Uh, any cautions you want to highlight or for HR professionals? Yeah, I would say don't fall into the AI trap. Don't think that every AI tool is going to solve all your problems. Be extremely weary when it comes to that. Solve for the problems that you have, but be open-minded to hear about problems that you don't know about. Uh, like I said, when we were talking to uh, restaurants in New York City that were still uh, holding a filing cabinet worth of paperwork, it's because they didn't know the problem that they had. And once they moved to the digital age, they saw the light. I think the same is going to happen with AI. It's that the improvements of data processing, content generation, that's all going to be solved uh, one way or another with AI. So at least be open to the change, but let it be tied to the problems that you're having. Perhaps your talent acquisition, uh, perhaps you're not writing good enough job descriptions. GPT could help with that. Perhaps you have too many candidates and you're sifting through the weeds. Uh, machine learning and AI could help with that. Uh, so like I said, be, be, be wary of them and make them fit with the problems that you're trying to solve for. And I think you should be okay. Um, whether or not this gets out of control of, uh, automated applying automated, um, call it, uh, uh, sifting through the weeds of all these applications that's yet to be seen and whether or not that's going to cause issues. Because it's not a perfect model, especially GPT. It makes mistakes. Yep. So be prepared for something like this to be imperfect for quite some time. Great conversation, Jamie. Appreciate your uh, your time today. Uh, tell the of audience course. how to connect with you and Human Riso. Of course. Human Riso is found at humanriso.com. We are on all major social media platforms at Human Riso. Uh, you can find me on the artist formerly known as Twitter uh, mm-hmm. as uh, Jamie underscore Aquila. Uh, same as on Instagram, jamie.aquila. Also, I'll put your links in the show notes there. That'll do it for this episode of the RecTech Podcast. Be sure to follow us on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, via the at RecTech Media handle. See every uh, podcast, video, and blog we publish. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And remember, always be recruiting. Another episode of RecTech is in the books. Follow Chris on Twitter at Chris Russell or visit RecTechMedia.com, where you can find the audio and links for this show on our blog. RecTech Media helps keep employers and recruiters up to date through our podcasts, webinars, and articles. So be sure to check out our other sites, Recruiting Headlines and HR Podcasters, to stay on top of recruiting industry trends. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon on the next episode of RecTech, the Recruiting Technology Podcast.